Hello, in this video we're going to use RStudio to do a multiple linear regression analysis. So let's go ahead and look at this data. It has, we have three quantitative variables here where college GPA is our response variable and we want to see whether or not high school SAT scores and high school GPA are significant predictors for college GPA. So the first thing we need to do is just run in the data. And because we've written it as vectors, we can just run it in like this. And now we have our data into the our global environment. We could also have just uploaded a data set rather than uploading vectors like this, and it would work exactly the same way. So the first thing we want to do is we want to see what our linear model looks like, see whether or not high school GPA and SAT are significant predictors for college GPA, and then look at the model so we can make a prediction. The way that we can do that is using the linear model command. So LM, this is the exact same thing we did in bivariate data, so looking at the relationship between two quantitative variables. Here we have college GPA as our response. This little tilde will give us kind of the versus or kind of an, like an equal sign. It's kind of the same thing. And it will separate the response variable from the explanatory variables. So here we have high school GPA plus SAT. So all we need to do is just add the explanatory variables together. We run this and we call it something like mod. And the reason why we do this is because just running the linear model command will only give us kind of uh, not very informative output. But once we call it something and do the summary of that linear model, then we'll get nice output where we can look at our coefficients and do hypothesis tests. So run that, then we run summary of that model and we get our least squares regression line. So if we were to write out the least squares regression model, we could get it from these estimates right here, the intercept. So we'd have college GPA as our response variable. And this is equal to the intercept of 0 0.634 plus the coefficient for high school GPA will be 0.628, so 0 0.628 times high school GPA plus the 0 0.00029, that's going to be the coefficient for SAT. Basically what that means is with a one point increase on the SAT, we'd expect their college GPA to increase by one point. So again, because here there's going to be a huge difference between the SAT scores, like the way that the units of the SAT score versus college GPA, that this doesn't seem like much, but maybe it is a pretty big shift once you consider what the variables uh, the units the variables are in. Okay, so now that we look at this, we can see that this is our least squares regression model, and we obtained this from the output. Now we can use our standard errors to do individual, individual confidence intervals for the slopes, and using t-critical values, we can find those. We can also use r to do that, but um, we're not going to do that in this example. Basically, now what I want to show you is that we can see that SAT is not really a significant predictor of college GPA when high school GPA is in the model, too. We can see that high school GPA is only just kind of significant. Now, if we look down here, though, at our F test statistic, this is where the output for F is going to be. This is going to test the entire model basically telling us whether or not there's at least one significant predictor in our model. Basically, that means is at least SAT or high school GPA a significant predictor for college GPA. We can see that we have an F test statistic of 7.508 with two numerator degree, degrees of freedom and seven denominator degrees of freedom. And it looks like the p-value for that is 0 0.01812. In general, this is a really pretty small p-value. So we're going to assume that at least one of these will be a more significant predictor than the other, except it's probably that they are also related to each other, and that's why we're not seeing much of a reaction with one of them or both of them here. We'll talk about that in just a second. Also, we can see our multiple R squared value, so 0.6821, and our adjusted R squared value. Recall we always want to typically look at our adjusted R squared value because that accounts for adding extra variables in that pro that maybe are already related to other variables. It accounts for overfitting the model. So this is the better estimate than just the regular multiple R squared calculation. 
All right, so now what we want to do is we want to just make a prediction based upon this model. And because I only just want to, basically this isn't the best model, but I want to show you how you could do it if you had a better model and you had multiple variables you wanted to predict for. So here, let's suppose we want to make a prediction for all students with a high school GPA of 3.6 and an SAT score of 1900. What would be their average college GPA score? We can do this using the predict command. So here we have predict, we put in our model, then we need to add in our X1 and X2, essentially high school GPA and SAT values that we want to predict for using a data frame. So we put in data frame, add that in, and then we put in interval equals confidence. So here this will give us a confidence interval for the response. So if we run this line, we get then the predicted fit. So basically this is the same as just plugging 3.6 into our model and then 1900 in for SAT, we'll get out about 3.446451. Now the lower and upper confidence intervals for the response can be calculated using some matrix algebra. Now in this class, we don't talk about how to, how to do that. It's not a prerequisite for the course. So basically we are not gonna be able to verify this by hand. However, we could still try to find this and use the same interpretations as we did for confidence intervals for the response as we did in bivariate data. Now, if we wanted to change the level of confidence, we could put in level equals 0 0.99. So, in so maybe we want to do a 99% confidence interval. The default is 95. So if we want to change that, we can. And we'll see that the point estimate stays exactly the same, but the lower and upper confidence interval will get wider. Basically, that's the same concept as any sort of confidence interval. The, the wider the or the higher the level of confidence, the wider the interval will get. All right, so what if we also wanted to perhaps do a prediction interval? So if we wanted to just estimate for a single person rather than a group of everybody that scored 3.6 or 1900 on their SAT, we wanted to make a prediction for a particular student that scored that, then we can calculate a predicted value with a prediction interval. Let's keep our level at 99%. All we need to do is change this interval to prediction rather than confidence, run this, and sure enough, we'll get the same fitted value. That's because we're just simply still plugging these into the values. That doesn't change, but our margin of error will change for a prediction interval when we want to estimate for a single person. So the predicted college GPA for a single student that had a high school GPA of 3.6 and an SAT score of 1900 will be from 2.74 to about 4.150697. So this upper bound could most likely just be changed to 4.0 since you can't have a GPA higher than that. All right, so this is how we can do prediction intervals for multiple linear regression analysis in R. Now the last thing that we wanna do is we want to refit the model because it's looking like perhaps we have a situation in which we have related we have related explanatory variables. So we SAT wasn't a significant predictor when high school GPA was in the model. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of model selection, really basic model selection that is. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we want to look at a scatter plot matrix of our data. So we need to put our vectors into a data frame and call the command pairs. So we we have pairs of our data frame, gpa.data, and we can look at the scatter plot matrix. And sure enough, we can see that high school GPA is related to college GPA. There's a positive relationship here, and SAT score is related to college GPA, maybe a little bit less so than high school GPA. But we, the most important thing that we can see from this too is that high school GPA and SAT scores are related to each other. So what that means is that basically because these are related, any sort of explanatory power one of these variables has is kind of muddled out or not really added on by adding in the other variable. So SAT score basically doesn't add any extra new information to try to describe college GPA. So let's go ahead and fit two models, one that fits the SAT score and one that fits the high school GPA. I'm just gonna come up here and copy this code and then adapt it a little bit to create two models to where we can kind of compare. So I have these two models, I'm gonna call this mod HS, so mod with the high school, and I'm going to call this one mod SAT, so the model with the variable SAT. Change the names down there in the summary commands as well, and then I'm going to just remove SAT from this model, and I'm going to remove high school GPA from this model. Then I will run the two 
models and their summaries. Whoops, and I have a little bit of an error. I need to add in a point there. There we go. So this is the linear model with high school GPA in it. And if we run this again, that's the linear model with SAT in it. And if we want to look at both, we can just open up this window a little bit more. And sure enough, we can see that if we just look at the adjusted R squared values, let's just look at that. For when it's the high school GPA model, this is going to be 0.6257, and this one is 0.4561. So just from the adjusted R squared values, we can see that the model with the high school variable in it is a better fit. We can see that also the p-value from the individual t-test on the slope is much smaller. It's 0 0.00392 in comparison to 0 0.0192. So even though SAT seems like it is a decent predictor for our college GPA, it looks like high school GPA is going to do a better job at it. Basically, if we look here, it looks like we have a smaller p-value and a higher adjusted r-squared value. So we're going to go with the model that has the highest, the smallest p-value and the highest adjusted r-squared value, which is the model that has high school GPA in it and that's going to be the most significant predictor for college GPA, where its model has a estimate of 0.7758 for its coefficient and 0.6861 for its intercept. So in multiple regression, basically we always want to try to find the best fitted model, and perhaps maybe that will just reduce to a bivariate model like it did in this example. So then from this kind of discovery that basically we don't really need SAT to predict college GPA, it doesn't do as good of a job as high school GPA, then we can go through the process of, of analyzing the data as bivariate data, just like we did in previous lessons.